Okay, we're going to go ahead and get started. Good evening, everyone. My name is Todd Schmott. I'm Chief of Police for the City of Omaha. purpose of this press conference is to give the public an update as to the events that have occurred at 30th and Martin Avenue just to the west today. The Mayor of Omaha, Jean Stothert, is out of town. She's in the state of Florida for her son's wedding. I've been in constant contact with the Mayor from the start of this incident to right before this press conference. On her behalf, the Mayor's Chief of Staff, Marty Bielek, is here with me, standing to my right. Also with me, and on behalf of Dr. Juan Asensio, the Chief Trauma Surgeon for Creighton University, is Dr. Michael Wagner. Dr. Wagner was also the attending surgeon today. City Council President Pete Festerson is standing behind me as well. Before I get into the details of the incident that I have right now, and we are in the middle of the investigation still, this is a somber day for the City of Omaha, my Omaha police officers especially, and the entire law enforcement community. It is with deep sorrow and pain that I have to announce that seven-year veteran officer, Officer Kerry Roscoe, has died after being shot in the line of duty. Kerry Roscoe, 29 years old, has been on the department for seven years and five months. She worked in the gang units, and she has since March of 2012. Her husband is Hector Roscoe. She has two step, a stepdaughter, eight-year-old Natalia, and a stepson, Santiago, who is six years old. Carrie had a newborn baby that was born February 17th and is in university, UNMC, an intensive care unit right now. Her name is Olivia Ruth. She is set to be released from the hospital tomorrow. Carrie's mother is Ella Holtz, brother is Elijah Holtz, Aaron Holtz, Nolan Neeson, sister Carrie Holtz. A little bit about Carrie. <clears throat> She's a tremendous officer an even better person. She coached baseball since 2009 in the North Omaha Boys and Girls Club. She volunteered with the Special Olympics. She was president of the Police Officers Ball to benefit the Special Olympics. She took in rescue dogs. She was a Girl Scout mentor. She spoke at Girls Inc. frequently. She was a friend, a popular officer, a top-notch person, and I, I just can't imagine that this has even happened, but Officer Orozco is a top-notch individual in the city of Omaha. Owes her a debt of gratitude and her family like no other. I'm going to get a little bit into the incident that had occurred, but before I do, I want to make note that the suspect in the case, Mr. Michael D. Wheeler, also died of gunshot wounds after being transported to Creighton University. Our condolences to the family, Mr. Wheeler, as well. So the details of the incident, as I can tell you right now, I'm going to say from the onset, this is we're in the middle of this investigation, but up to date, this is what I can verify. Today at 12.58 p.m., Omaha police officers assigned to the Metro Area Fugitive Task Force. That is comprised of local, state, and federal law enforcement officials. We're conducting surveillance in the area of Martin Avenue and Reed Street. The fugitive officers were attempting to locate and arrest a suspect who had a felony warrant for first degree assault as a result of a shooting investigation. The officers observed the suspect on foot near the address of 3159 Vane Street. At this location, the suspect fired several gunshots at officers and fled back towards 3057 Martin Avenue. An Omaha police sergeant and two officers assigned to the Fugitive Task Force confronted the suspect in the back of 3057 Martin Avenue. Gunshots were exchanged between the suspect and the officers. At this time, yeah. Officer Kerry Orozco was struck by gunfire. Yeah. Immediate first aid was administered by officers who arrived on scene to include CPR. The suspect fled east to the rear of 3043 Reed Street where the suspect is located by officers. The suspect was suffering from gunshot wounds when the officers located him. Officers also located a semi-automatic handgun 
with a high-capacity drum magazine near Mr. Wheeler's body. The officer and the suspect were transported to CHI hospital in extremely critical condition and with CPR in progress. The suspect, once again, has been identified as 26-year-old Marcus D. Wheeler. His next of kin have been notified. Mr. Wheeler is a convicted felon and also a known gang member. I want to be clear that we are nowhere near the end of this investigation. Matter of fact, it has just started. I'm asking for the public's patience as we finish this investigation. We will be working through the night and probably into tomorrow, just getting the basics down. All future information on this incident from a law enforcement perspective will come from the press information office of the Omaha Police Department or through myself directly. Right now, my greatest concern is with my officers and their families and the integrity of this investigation. At this time, I'm going to turn the podium over to the Mayor's Chief of Staff, Marty Bielek. In her absence, the mayor has asked me to make the following statement. This is an extremely sad and tragic day for our city. I offer my sincere sympathy for the Orozco family and Wheeler families impacted by today's events. Officer Carrie Orozco gave her life for all of us in her service to Omaha and the police department. She will be remembered and missed as a loving wife, mother, daughter, and dedicated officer. I thank Chief Schmatterer for his thorough communication with me this afternoon. Omaha is a compassionate community. Omaha police officers put their lives in danger every day as they protect and serve the citizens of Omaha. Officer Roscoe will be honored by the entire community for her service and bravery through our prayer and our continued community support for all police officers. Thank you. Dr. Wagner. Thank you so much. I'm Dr. Mike Wagner. I'm one of the trauma critical care surgeons here at Creighton University Medical Center. I'm speaking on behalf of Dr. Juan Asensio, who is our chief of our trauma division here, who unfortunately could not be with us today. He's currently in Rome, where he is receiving recognition for the work that he's done in the field of trauma over the past 20 years. A little after 1,300 hours, the uh, team members of the trauma uh, service here at Creighton University Medical Center received information that the Omaha EMS services were transporting two patients in critical conditions to our trauma center. Two teams were immediately mobilized and were ready to treat these patients upon their arrival in the trauma bay here at Creighton University Medical Center. In spite of our most valiant efforts and ex aggressive care and therapy, these patients were unable to be, uh, to be resuscitated and they expired after a long uh, effort at resuscitating them. Thank you. We'll try to take a few questions. Chief Chairman Maxwell. Hi, Jeremy. Thoughts and condolences for the forces lost today. Thank you. But Chief, talk a little bit about your message to your men and women because we've seen them guarding the scene all day. Obviously, they're very active at 30th and Martin. They have not had the chance very likely to process what happened today because they're still on the job. What has been your message to the men and women who report to you? First of all, Jeremy, the Omaha Police Department, very professional entity, and what you're seeing is the men and women of the Omaha Police Department doing their jobs right now. And, and I'm standing here doing my job, even though inside I, I'm churning. My message to them is there are special individuals in this community. Something the community desperately needs is that law enforcement presence and those willing to step up and apprehend violent offenders and those willing to put themselves in harm's way. Harm's way like took place today. My message to them is Keep your head held high. We'll do our job professionally, and we're going to grieve. We'll grieve like everybody else. This is a very tough day for the Omaha Police Department, for the city of Omaha, law enforcement in general. And I want to expand, but I'm going to go to the next question. Chief, was this a good consider the routine warrant of being served, or was this uh, suspect? suspected to be more violent than that 
Generally, as a, as a rule of thumb, our Metro Fugitive Task Force is a higher level fugitive unit. They go after the worst of the worst. And Mr. Wheeler did have a warrant for a shooting, a previous shooting in the city of Omaha. So that categorizes very, he's a very dangerous individual based on that warrant. Warrant issued by a judge. No, I don't think so at all. I think Omaha is a tremendous community. I've said all along that North Omaha, mm -hmm. tremendous community. And we're going to work through this issue with the community side by side. That's why we're here right now, to give as much information as we possibly can. Remember I said future information will come from me. And we'll get something out tomorrow as to this investigation unfolds. But the community should be very confident in knowing that we're doing our jobs professionally. We're overseeing this investigation. And even though we're grieving to know, like no other right now, we'll maintain that professionalism and do what we need to do. Next question. It's, it's a little bit hard to hear when you're talking on your phone when, I, when questions are coming at me, please. Any, I'm going to take one more question. What did you say to her family? What I said to her family, I'm going to leave between me and the family. The family is grieving right now. If, if the media wouldn't mind just giving them some space right now. Obviously, it was the worst case scenario for them. And they, they've reacted with a lot of pain accordingly because of that. But I like to keep what I say to the families very, very quiet. And I'll get you with a question just because you... You asked, and then we'll move on. Chief, the police community is much more than just the, the officers. Um, we've been seeing a lot of support coming from the community all over Twitter and Facebook and stuff like that. Um, what words do you have, whether it be from other officers throughout the metro or for, for people supporting and doing that hashtag yeah. support balloon? Your community is Omaha Police. We're part of your community. We represent the community. Just like the media represents the voice and the, the earpiece of the community, we're, we're, that, we're the protectors for the community. We are the community. That's why I don't feel that this will cause any negative police community relations. I think you'll see the city of Omaha band together, look for the outcome of this investigation, and support the Omaha Police Department, and certainly support Officer Orozco for her sacrifice and what has taken place. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to close with just a, a thank you to the City of Omaha. Thank you to the media for coming here right now. You've always been great representatives of the citizens. And on behalf of CHI Health, the Mayor's Office, and Omaha Police Department, I want everybody to have a good evening. Thank you.